And now, friends, lights, camera, action right here on Talks for Extra Time because it's that time of the show and that day of the week, Friday, when we catch up and touch base with our mate Van Connor, our main man when it comes to all matters movie-related on a Friday. He gives you three recommendations on Freeview of great films of the weekend, iMatches, and you make your own choice. Good morning, Van, and how the devil are you? And how's the week been? How's life in lockdown on after 50 days now? Do you know what, Mr. Ross? I guess to talk about one of my favourite Jason Statham movies ever. So my week's looking up, sir. How are you doing? Not too bad. And you mentioned um, one of the great Jason Statham movies. I mean, he's a hugely profitable star in Hollywood terms. He's made some great films. I think he's underrated. What have you got for us to kick us off on today, uh, Van? So I've got a movie I absolutely adore. I don't know how this wasn't the bigger thing. This is based on a series of popular novels. Uh, I forget the author. It's, uh, it's called Blitz. It stars Jason Statham as a homicide detective, uh, works for the Met in London, wears a series of very cool cardigans. And in the case of, uh, of this one cinematic outing he's been granted, this, uh, this take no prisoners, you know, plays by his own rules, homicide detective, uh, has to hunt down a serial killer, played here by uh, Aidan Gillen from Game of Thrones. He has to contend with the machinations of a, of a tabloid reporter played by David Morrissey, and it's about how all of these uh, these disparate personalities come together in this this deadly game of cat and mouse. I've got a clip for you of Statham, you know, grilling a suspect for some information. And of course, what really gives this bite, I think, is it's a serial killer who's targeting cops, isn't it? That's exactly it, and he calls himself Blitz, as in, as he calls it, as in Blitz Creek as he wages his, his war on authority. Okay, here we go. Here's the clip. It's Blitz. It's 11.15 tonight. It's five star. It's a belter. He set fire to a police dog. You tuned it. Somebody asked him why he did it. He said, practice. Well, that's it. Seriously, he's another. If we pulled in every who said that, we'd be able to arrest his suspects. It's his name. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. But I'm meeting a guy later who's going to get it from me. Don't bother. I'll go to the gym. What's the manager? You see, I... Don't I get something? I'll let you the rest of my crisps, you greedy bugger. What more do you want? Ah, oh, it's a cracking film, that is it. And he can deliver those lines brilliantly, Jason Statham. So that's 11.15 tonight on Five Star. Up against it on BBC Two is a film that I thought went under the radar a bit. It's called Pawn Sacrifice. And while chess may not be the sexiest of on-screen subjects, unless you've got Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway playing chess in the Thomas Crown Affair, this is great because it's basically the story of the big match. Bobby Fischer, Boris Spassky, chess in the 1970s. Toby Maguire plays the slightly odd... American Grandmaster. Lee Shriver plays Boris Spassky. It's directed by Edward Zwick, who gave us films like Glory and the Last Samurai. Did you like this movie, Porn Sacrifice? Because I, I thought it would have got more attention than it actually did when it came out in, uh, I think, 2014 it came out then. Yeah, I think it's a really, really great movie. It's one of uh, a bunch for Tobe Maguire that sort of uh, come out of nowhere that pick up on really important true stories. Uh, sea Biscuit, for instance, which I know you're oh, a fan yes. of. Yep. Another one of those kind of things. Tobe Maguire, true story, should be a big awards contender, doesn't quite get there. He did one with Denis Villeneuve as well, called Enemy, I think. You know, if you look at his uh, roster of films, uh, films like Prisoner and, and Sicario, it sort of fits in there. Uh, this is another really, really good one. This is from about 2004, I think, something like that. Yeah, I think it's um, maybe slightly later there, but even so, it's on tonight, 11.20, BBC Two, it's Pawn Sacrifice, and here's the trailer. This game. It's a rabbit hole. After only four moves, there's more than 300 billion options to consider. We can take you very close to the edge. He told him to move like this. He told himself. If I take the pieces away, he just keeps playing in his head day and night. I can tell you he has great potential. American chess prodigy Bobby Fischer became the youngest ever grandmaster in the history of the game. Where do you go from here? I want to play the Russians. You're the best in the world, and I'm going to beat them all. Fischer mania is taking the country by storm. My next guest, Mr. Bobby Fischer. Mr. Fischer? Are you a patriot? 
I mean, the, the terrifying thing about this film is when you watch the kind of mental decline of Bobby Fischer, he becomes paranoid, he starts to believe, even though he's Jewish, that it's some international Zionist conspiracy. So it's quite a chilling film at times, but a good movie. And you've got a real bit of fun for us from the 1990s, I think, tomorrow, 9 o'clock on Sony Movies. It's Jean-Claude Van Damme's, well, one of his finest hours. It's Time Cop you've chosen, Van, you devil. I was going to go for this one, and you nicked it first. I absolutely adore Time Cop. So Time Cop is this awesome 1994 feature film adaptation of a dark horse comic. It stars Jean-Claude Van Damme as Kit Walker, the, you know, the, the last man of honor serving in the Time Enforcement Bureau, the, the, the you know, the, the elite police force of time itself. We have to go back in time to stop a corrupt senator played by Ron Silver from manipulating the timeline so that he can own the White House using motivation, which sounds very, very eerily familiar in 2020 and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna point fingers or name names i'm just gonna let the clip suggest this for you here we go then it's time cop it's nine o'clock tomorrow night on sony movies another cracker give me the envelope thank you the country's going down the drain because of the special interests we need someone in the white house who's so rich doesn't have to listen to anybody what's that the senator was having a fundraiser you know i'm in office it's going to be like the 80s again. Top 10% will get richer. The other 90% can emigrate to Mexico where they can live a better life. So, Agent Walker, you're going to stay. I think you plan too far ahead. Obviously, you don't. Some great action sequences, and there's some good kind of romper stomper science fiction as well. Now, I could have gone for tomorrow night, ITV4, <laughs> 10 past 11, one of my favourite Clint Eastwood westerns, High Plains Drifter, which is a kind of hallucinatory mad western. Instead, I'd I have been... money. Oh, I've gone Sony Movies, though, 10.45. Now, this film in the States was called Chuck, and it's the true story of Chuck Wepner, the man who almost went the distance with Muhammad Ali, inspired Sly Stallone, they say, in part to write Rocky. Over here, because Wepner took a lot of punishment, took a lot of cuts in the ring. It was called The Bleeder. It came from 2016, and great cast in this. Lee Schreiber, once again, he plays Chuck. You've got Naomi Watts in it. Sly Stallone pops up in a cameo. Michael Rappaport. And, and playing Muhammad Ali, you've got Pooch Hall. Fantastic. Fantastic Ali performance in this, and as I say, inspired Rocky. So there's that element to the film as well. It's got its. It's not a masterpiece, this, but it's a good boxing film. And it's 10:45 tomorrow night. Sony Movies, and here's the trailer. You don't know me. You don't, Chuck Webner. Well, you do know me, but you don't know you know me. Once upon a time, I was the heavyweight champ of New Jersey. I was the best. Hey, set my man up with whatever he wants. And some guy named Stallone wrote a screenplay inspired by me. I was like, what? The real Rocky. I told you you know me. The real Rocky. Yeah, everything's gonna be different now, baby. And here's a bit of trivia for you. They played Mark Boland and T-Rex's Get It On. That was Mark's only big hit in the States, um, Van. And they thought Get It On was too rude. So in the States, on the label, it says Banger Gong. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> the times they went... That's a good old boxing film, that one, though. And I've also... And, of course, I should say Chuck Wepner, and boxing fans will know this, was the last man to fight Sonny Liston. He had 51 fights, 35 wins, but he had 17 knockouts. So he was a right bruiser and brute in the ring. And I've got another boxing film, but a very different one, as my recommendation for Sunday... 6 a.m. to set the recorders, Sunday morning on Sony Movies Classic, and all our film recommendations, folks, are on preview. It's an absolute Elia Kazan masterpiece. It's got uh, Rod Steiger. It's got Lee J. Yeah. Cobb as Johnny Friendly, but above all, it's got Marlon Brando as Terry Malloy, the washed-up boxer, on the waterfront. This is a beautiful black-and-white film. Carl Malden's in it, as well, isn't he, as the, the kind of campaigning priest. This is a great film from, I think, 1954. Great movie, Van. This is absolutely iconic. This is one of the original 50s Hollywood maps masterpieces for me. This is pretty much the entire reason we view Brando the way we do. This is his James Dean in Giants moment, I think. And what's interesting about it, I think, is from the time it was on, um, it's about basically, for those who don't know, corrupt gangsters are running the Dockers Union, um, they're siphoning money off of the people, and it's about basically becoming a stall pigeon, turning evidence against your former colleagues and friends. And three of the people directly involved in it, Eli Kazan, Bud Schulberg, who came up with the story, and Lee J. Cobb, who plays the gangster boss, all gave, were all friendly 
witnesses to the House Un-American Committee, which they regretted later. So it's almost like a vindication of being a kind of a stool pigeon, this film. But a great movie, and this is one of the key scenes. This is, of course, the back of the taxi. Rod Steiger playing Marlon Brando's character's brother, and they talk about the time he could have been a you-know-what. Remember that night in the garden, you came down my dressing room and said, Kid, this ain't your night. We're going for the price on Wilson. You remember that? This ain't your night. My night, I could have taken Wilson apart. So what happens? He gets the title shot outdoors in a ballpark, and what do I get? A one-way ticket to Palookaville. You was my brother, Charlie. You should have looked out for me a little bit. You should have taken care of me just a little bit so I wouldn't have to take them dives for the short end money. Well, I had some bets down for you. You saw some money. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. Instead of a bum. Which is what I am. Let's face it. That is some film, is it not, Van? That's 6 oh, o'clock, Sunday morning, Sony Movies Classic. And again, you've got a cracker to end with. I think film four, five past 11. Tell us why you've chosen Rush. I'm a very, very big fan of Rush. Rush was the 2013 effort from uh, Ron Howard that documented the rivalry between 1970s Formula One racers, Nicky Lauda and James Hunt. Now, I didn't know about either of these men, because I'm not a Formula One fan, but I saw the movie seven years ago now. I saw the actor Daniel Brühl for the first time as Nicky Lauder. I saw Chris Hemsworth, you know, fresh off of his, his run of playing, you know, Thor and starring in Black Hat as James Hunt. And it is about just this vicious, antagonistic relationship between these two icons of 1970s racing. Uh, I, I show you know more about both men than I do. I've got a clip for you of Nicky Lauder basically queuing up their dynamic for us. It's film four, five past eleven, Sunday night. It's a must-see. It's Rush. Have a listen. My name is Nicky Lauder, and racing people know me for two things. The first is my rivalry with him. Rassel the streets. Regardez à tout. What about Hunt? Has he changed? No, he's going on with. I don't know why it became such a big thing. We are just drivers, busting each other's balls. To me, this is perfectly normal. But other people saw it differently. That whatever it was between us went deeper. Some great recommendations from Ivan this week. I think we've got half a dozen belters there to fill the time for people in lockdown. Can we do it all again next Friday? That sounds like a plan to me, good sir. Brilliant stuff from the main man, Van Connor. And Van, where can people hear you and our uh, Monday regular Rebecca Perfect's musing on Matters Cinematic? Where can we find that? Uh, you can find us on podcast platforms every Friday morning on the Off Screen Show. The Off Screen Show, and he's on the radio with us each and every Friday. Huge thanks to Van Connor. Have a great weekend, Van. Stay safe, and we'll talk next week on Talk Sport Extra Time. And that's a wrap. Kick off your...